This is the Google Pixel 5. And I'm just gonna start by saying that this is not the best smartphone hardware that you can get for around 600 euros right now. I would give that to the OnePlus 8T or the Samsung Galaxy S20 FE, but I would still choose the Pixel 5 over those two mainly because of the camera, but I'm gonna talk about it a little bit more in this video. I'm Kevin from Peacock Inside Tech, and this is my Google Pixel 5 review. Ever since my Google Pixel 5 got delivered, I haven't put it down yet. And keep in mind that I have the iPhone 12 Pro Max and the Galaxy Z Fold 2 on my desk right now but for some reason, I really just like using the Pixel 5 right now. Maybe it's because of the smaller form factor. It is refreshing to have something a little bit smaller because I normally tend to go with the bigger phones, but it's so small and it's just so comfortable to use right now. And it's funny because six inches around 10 years ago would have been considered like a huge phone. I think for the average consumer to understand the value of the Pixel, you kind of have to ignore the spec sheet and the design. Although I do like this minimalistic design of the Pixel 5 and this sort of sage green color here, it's not the flashiest phone on the market. And let's be honest, this finish kind of looks and feels like a kitchen counter from like the 90s. But the phone is definitely well built with this aluminum back and this soft plastic coating over top of it. And it also has a wireless charging built into it, which is pretty amazing. And this is when you start to notice what Google is doing because the Pixel 5 isn't some shiny, flashy smartphone with a folding or twisting display. And I think that's intentional because Google wants you to focus on the real highlight of this phone and that's the software. And if you think about it, that's pretty much what it's always about with Google hardware products. They wanna give you a platform that can help you through your day, but at the same time, just staying out of your way. And if you look at the Pixel in that way, I think it's a little bit easier to understand the value of it because if you just compare the specs, the Pixel 5 would lose in almost every category. But the user experience, in my opinion, is the best Android experience you can get. Because even with this mid-range Snapdragon 765G processor in the inside, this phone is fast, it's smooth. I can't really tell the difference between this and the Snapdragon 865 processor, except for when you get into a little bit more intensive apps where you really start to notice a performance drop. Everything else I do on the phone is just as fast and as smooth as on any other flagship that I've used. One area where I do notice the weaker processor is when taking multiple photos with the camera app. And after taking a series of pictures, the camera app seems to lag a little bit and the phone slows down, but that's about it. But speaking of those cameras, the Pixel 5 only comes with two cameras on the back and comparing that to some other phones, you might would think like right away, Google, come on, just give me some more cameras. Every other phone has like at least three cameras, but nope, Google focuses once again on the software. Even though it has the same 12 megapixel sensor from like four years ago, the Pixel 5 still takes some of the best and most consistent shots from any smartphone that I've tested. It's not the king anymore, but definitely up there with the best. This year, they decided to go with an ultra wide camera next to the main camera instead of the 2X zoom from the Pixel 4. And I wish that it did have all three of those cameras, but it is what it is. And to be fair, the Super Res digital zoom on the Pixel 5 is really good. And you get close to the same quality with the digital zoom that you would get with the optical zoom lens. The ultra wide camera isn't as wide as on other phones like the iPhone 12, or the latest Samsung flagships. It has a 107 degree field of view and the quality is okay. To be honest, I expected it to be a lot better because of Google's amazing computational photography, but maybe the image quality will improve over time. Let's see. Let me know what you think of the image quality of the Pixel 5 down in the comments. The main camera is just as good as it was on the Pixel 4, if not maybe a little better. Everything comes out super sharp, very detailed, and it has this contrasty look from the Pixel that I personally really like. And even when the lights go down, Google's night sight has been improved, and now you can even take portraits in low light. And the quality is really good. The Pixel's portrait mode has always been one of the best and one of my favorites of any smartphone. 
and the Pixel 5 pushes that even further. The astrophotography mode is still here too, and it's just as impressive as it was the first time I tried it on the Pixel 4 last year. Google decided to focus a little more on video quality this year. With the Pixel 5, you can now record 4K at 60 FPS, finally. There are also some new video stabilization features like standard for the normal to light movements, locked to give you that tripod look even when the phone is handheld, action for those shots where you're moving around a lot, and cinematic pan that actually slows down portions of the video to give you that cool cinematic look like you get from the movies. The video stabilization was already really good on previous pixels, but this takes it even further. So like I mentioned before, the Pixel 5 is not the best hardware that you can get at the 600 euro price point, but it's definitely, in my opinion, the best software experience you can get on any Android phone right now. And it also still has the important features like water and dust resistance, and it also has wireless charging, even with an aluminum back, and it also has reverse wireless charging, so you can charge like your Pixel Buds or any other accessory. The only things that could be a little bit better for me on the Pixel 5 are the earpiece for phone calls because the Pixel 5 doesn't come with a physical speaker. It actually vibrates the top of the display to give off sound, which is really cool, don't get me wrong, but if you're used to a speaker at the top of the phone, it might sound a little muffled. This also affects the stereo speaker sound of the phone when you're watching videos because since it actually only has one speaker firing out of the bottom, the quality doesn't sound as good as something like on the Pixel 4, but it does get loud enough, don't get me wrong, you can definitely hear what you're watching, but just something to note. Another thing that could be a little bit better for me is the brightness of the display. I mean, it gets bright enough, you can see everything, but when you come from phones like the iPhone or any Samsung device, you can see that it's not as bright as they are but it's definitely a good display. Like I love the color science, everything looks great. It has good viewing angles with a full HD plus resolution on a six inch screen, everything is sharp. And it also has a 90 Hertz refresh rate. So everything looks super smooth, super nice. This is a very good display. This is arguably the best display ever on a Pixel device. It only has this small camera punch out for the selfie camera. Other than that, it's all display and it doesn't have a weird bathtub notch or a really big forehead and a small chin like the Pixel 4. It's really good, it looks really nice. Google also decided to get rid of the Soli sensor at the top of the phone that enabled face unlock. I'm gonna miss it, but I'm gonna say I think it was the right choice from Google to go this way because now you get a fingerprint scanner on the back and it's well placed and really fast. And in times like these when we all have to wear a mask anyway, it's just the right decision for me. One area where the Pixel 5 is really good is in battery life. This is the longest lasting Pixel that I've ever tested. I've been getting close to seven and a half hours of on-screen time at the end of the day and that's really amazing. I've never gotten numbers like that on a Pixel device. I take the phone off the charger around 7 a.m. and at around 10 p.m. I still have over 40% battery left. So you don't have to worry about killing this battery in one day. I mean, unless you're some hardcore gamer or something, but with mixed usage, the battery is great. Gaming on the Pixel 5 was also pretty good. I didn't notice any stuttering or freezes or anything. So if you want to play games on it, it's also no problem. And to be honest, I didn't expect to like the Pixel 5 as much as I do because of Google's decision to go with a higher mid-range phone. But I have to say, I really like this phone. I do wish there was an XL version because I do prefer a bigger display on a phone. But if you're looking for a smaller phone with a great Android experience, great cameras and great battery life, the Pixel 5 is definitely a phone you should consider. So thanks for watching my video. And if you liked it, don't forget to subscribe. A thumbs up would be greatly appreciated. And I will see you in the next video.